Uh, we mentioned earlier, today we have the opportunity and the privilege to participate in the Lord's Supper. And, and I want you to think about uh, something that you maybe remember from the past uh, couple of years, but maybe not. Uh, there was a time when the President of the United States suggested somewhat strangely, that perhaps uh, we could somehow get rid of the coronavirus by uh, drinking or injecting some form of bleach into our bodies. Now, whether or not that was a joke or not is not really relevant. The point is, is that there was a recognition that there was a disease sweeping through the world and that something needed to clean it up. And the reality is, brothers and sisters, that there is and always has been, since Adam and Eve fell in the garden, a disease far more insidious than COVID-19 or anything else that has plagued humanity since that time. And that disease is sin. Unfortunately for us, it is not simply a disease that you passively catch. It is, it is a disease that you actively acquire. It is a disease that all of us have at one point or another chosen. Today we're going to talk about Jesus again as the high priest, and we are going to talk about the reality that his blood cleanses us. And perhaps this is not something that you have thought about before. But in the Old Testament sacrificial system, when, when the Israelites, when the high priest would sacrifice the goat or the lamb or the bull or whatever, they would, and I apologize for perhaps a somewhat gruesome picture, but they would slit the throat of the animal and its blood would pour out. And then they would take some of that blood and they would sprinkle it over the temple and all the things within it. And the reason for that is that sin, sin led to death. And so death became symbolic of, of the corruption of sin, its result. And the blood of the animal was symbolic of the animal's life, which was poured out for the cleansing of the sins of Israel and the cleansing of the people. And so, in a way, the blood of the lamb, the blood of the goat, the blood of the bull was a detergent, as it were. A detergent to clean things. Now, the Bible tells us very clearly that the blood, the life blood of an animal is not enough to permanently and totally cleanse us. Really, the Bible tells us that ultimately the life of an animal or even multiple animals over the course of our lives is not enough to cleanse us finally and completely or at all. Ultimately, the only life that can cleanse the death from us is not bleach, nor is it animal's blood, but ultimately the only sacrifice that could do that, that could cleanse us, is the sacrifice of Jesus. His life's blood cleanses the death from us permanently, and forever. 
It is not done over and over and over again. But once, one sacrifice, one giving of Jesus' lifeblood is enough for all of your sins and all of my sins and all of the sins that have ever been or ever will be. There is no sin that Jesus' blood cannot cover except for, of course, the ultimate rejection of that free gift. Because, of course, God will not force you to accept His life's blood. And so as we come to communion today, we are reminded that the symbols that we have here of Jesus' body and of His blood are symbols of that one sacrifice. That one sacrifice that was and is and always will be the only one that really matters. The only one that really makes sense. The difference. Now, brothers and sisters, this sacrifice was not an easy one. If you can remember the culture of some of our First Nations peoples, that when they hunt, when they gather animals, they thank the animal for its life with respect, not cavalierly slaughtering the lives of animals for sport alone, but remembering that the animal's sacrifice would give the hunter and his family and his tribe life. So too, the sacrifice of Old Testament animals was not meant to be something cavalier or easy. It was certainly not meant to be something that the people of Israel were supposed to take pleasure in, the gore and the guts as it were. No. It was a reminder of the serious consequences of sin. That only life given could wash away death. And so too, the the offering that Jesus' life symbolized here is, is not a small thing. And so we remember today that communion is bittersweet. It is bitter because it was my sin, it was your sin, It is my sin. It is your sin that makes it necessary for Jesus' life to have been given for us. The One who loves us the most, more than we can possibly imagine, gave His life for us. And not only did He give His life for us, but we were also those who took it from Him. I killed Jesus. You killed Jesus. And yet, at the same time, this feast is also so very sweet. Because Jesus willingly gave His life. And by His life and His death and His resurrection, we are not only cleansed from all of the sin that we have ever committed and all of the sin that we will sadly still commit, but we are also brought into His family, adopted as His blood brothers and sisters. We are part of the family of God. God the Father is our Father. God the Son in Jesus Christ is our brother. And the Holy Spirit is our comforter 
and counselor. Thank you for the amen. I haven't gotten very many of those here, <laughs> but I love them. Amen. Right? Feel free to say amen anytime. You, but don't feel obligated either. You don't have to. Right? This is, this is our family now. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And so when we celebrate, we truly celebrate. Brothers and sisters, Jesus Himself set up this feast for us. On the night on which He was betrayed, He took the bread and gave thanks for it. And He broke it, saying, This is My body. Do this in remembrance of me. In a similar manner, near the end of the Passover feast, he poured the cup and gave thanks for it and said, This is my blood in the new covenant poured out for you. Do this in remembrance of me of me. Brothers and sisters, if you are here and if you love Jesus and you know that He died for you to save you from your sins, we do not require that you pass a master's theological examination. We do not require that you be of a certain age. But if you love Jesus, and you know that He sacrificed Himself for you for your salvation. If you are young and you have talked with your parents about this, you are welcome to participate in this feast. We'll invite the elders to come forward at this time. Brothers and sisters, there is a faith that we testify to when we participate in this feast. And so I would invite you now to stand and testify together that faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Maker in heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only begotten Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, I believe a holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray together. Father in heaven, thank you so much for inviting us to this feast. Thank you so much for your Son, our great High Priest, who was and is our only sacrifice and our means of salvation. Thank you that through your Holy Spirit you have given us faith to believe in His salvation for us by grace alone. Lord, we pray that you will draw us today into your presence as you already have. And that for us today, this bread and this juice will be for us your body and your blood. Lord, we pray all of this in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray using these words. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Brothers and sisters, take, eat, remember, and believe that the body of our Lord Jesus Christ was given for the complete forgiveness of all our sins.
brothers and sisters, take, drink, remember, and believe that the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ was poured out for the complete forgiveness of all our sins. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who heals your diseases and cleanses all your sins. Praise the Lord. Thank you, brothers. You may be seated.